Hi guys, welcome back. This would be our last video for capital budgeting. In the last videos, we have focused our attention to independent projects. If you can remember, when evaluating independent projects, as long as the net present value is greater than zero, the profitability index is greater than one, and the internal rate of return is greater than the hurdle rate, the project is considered desirable. But what if the projects are not independent. Remember last time, independent projects are projects that are not related to one another. Accepting one of them can happen whether you accept or reject the other. So say if you accept project A, you can still accept project B, project C, if they are independent from one another. But there are also projects that are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive projects are those that when one is accepted, the other is rejected. That is, at most, only one of them can be chosen. Thus, if you accept project A, you can no longer accept project B if they are mutually exclusive. Let us focus our attention to the next sample case involving a mutually exclusive project. NICAT Corporation is considering two mutually exclusive projects. The company's weighted average cost of capital is 16%. The NPV profiles of the two projects in pesos are as follows. So we have for each discount rate, the NPV profiles of Project 1 and Project 2. So let us arrive at the IRR and NPV of the two projects. Which project has a higher IRR? Remember that the IRR, when used as a discount rate, would lead to an NPV of 0. In the sample case, note that the NPV of Project 1 will be 0 at 18%. The NPV of Project 2 will be 0 at 26%. In this case, the project with the higher IRR is Project 2. Next, which project has a higher NPV? Now, take note that the weighted average cost of capital is 16% for the company. So we are going to look at the net present value using that as our discount rate. The NPV of project 1 is 480. The NPV of project 2 is 84. Take note in this case, we would have project 1 with the higher NPV. So which project has a higher NPV? It is project 1. To summarize our findings, we have the following. Project 1 has an NPV of 480, IRR of 18%. Project 2 has an NPV of 84, IRR of 26%. Project 1 has the higher NPV, Project 2 has the higher IRR. Which project should we select? Again, with the assumption that they are mutually exclusive. We know that both projects are profitable. Under both cases, the NPV is greater than zero. IRR is greater than the hurdle rate. But which should we select if we have to choose one? They are mutually exclusive. We have to select the one with the higher net present value. To answer the question, it would be project one. Why should we judge on the basis of the net present value? It has something to do with which has a more realistic reinvestment assumption. The reinvestment assumption, if we are going to use NPV, is that cash flows, when generated, will be invested again to the company and earn a rate of return equal to the WAC. Under the IRR model, 
when cash flows are generated from the project. After the project is finished, it is still assumed that cash flows would continuously earn at that same IRR. If we are going to compare the NPV of project 1 and 2, that is 480 and 84, we are actually looking at a figure that pertains to the whole life of each project. So whatever the economic life of each project is, they are all accounted for in the net present value. As such, whenever there are no more cash flows generated, we would assume that those cash flows would just break even. To break even in finance, the cash flows that have been generated will just earn equal to the weighted average cost of capital, the hurdle rate. But in the internal rate of return model, there is an issue. The figure that you see there is simply the rate of return good for one year. One year in the project's life. This would make it less comparable for the two IRRs. The 18% IRR of Project 1 may pertain to, say, a useful life of 5 years. The 26% IRR of Project 2, although it is significantly higher, may pertain only to, say, 2 years, making the two figures not as comparable at all. So, that being the case, it would be wiser if we're going to evaluate on the basis of NPV. Furthermore, if we are going to make decisions for the company under financial management, remember that the goal is to maximize shareholders' value. And the net present value is an indicator of that shareholders' value. That is for mutually exclusive projects. Now, let us go back to independent projects. You can accept two or more projects in a group. However, we're going to face a capital constraint, also known as capital rationing. So we are going to talk about independent projects in situations involving capital rationing. Let us refer to the following sample case. CatCat Services is evaluating three investment projects. The summary below shows each project's net present value and their respective initial investments required. These projects are independent. We have three projects, X, Y, and Z, the NPV profiles, and the investment amount. CatCat has an investment constraint or capital rationing constraint of 100,000. Which combinations of projects would represent the optimal investment that should be recommended to CatCat Services Management? Now, what is our goal? Our goal is to maximize shareholders' value. That is to increase the overall net present value. Should we select the project with the highest NPV first? Let's try it. If we are going to look at the sample case, the data shows that Project Z has the highest NPV with 80,000. So let us try. Select Project Z. The capital available is 100,000. The constraint for investment. If we select Project Z, we are going to consume the entire 100,000. The NPV of Project Z is 80,000, thus the total NPV is 80,000. This, however, is not the optimal decision. What should we do instead is to take into account the constraint by dividing the value by the net investment for each project. By doing so, we're able to select those projects that are more profitable on a per peso of investment, considering we have limited investment funds. So what we're going to do is to rank on the basis of profitability index. So to arrive at the profitability index, we need to work back on the value. 
add back the net present value to the investment, you would have the following value. The project's value, X, 100,000, Y, 95,000, Z, 180,000. To arrive at the profitability index, divide this value by the investment amount. For X, divided by 50,000. Y divided by 50,000 and Z divided by 100,000. The profitability indices for each project are 2, 1.9, 1.8 respectively. Based on this profitability indices, we would say that we have to prioritize project X first, Y, and then Z. The capital available is 100,000. If we select project X first, it's 50,000. We still have 50,000. If we select project Y next, we are going to consume 50,000 and that would completely consume our investable funds. Now, if we select the two, we have the NPV of project X, 50,000. NPV of project Y, 45,000 for a total NPV of 95,000. So if we have chosen Project Z, considering it has the highest NPV, that's not the best thing to do because if we select X and Y, we can have a higher NPV. That is by ranking based on profitability index. So this would be our concluding topic for capital budgeting. Like, share, and subscribe.